This video is going to be a complete A to Z guideline for beginners on dropshipping. I'm going to cover how you can find winning products, how you can create a store, how you can create really good ads, how you structure Facebook ads, and how to scale. If you don't know me yet, my name is Michael Bernstein and at this point I've already helped over 100 people in dropshipping. I've scaled my own stores to six and seven figures and have six and seven figure clients which are just crushing it with their dropshipping stores. So this video is gonna be specifically for everybody who isn't there yet. If you're making six figures per month, this video is probably not for you. I have a bunch of other videos for you on the channel, but if you are just starting out, this video is perfect for you because again, I'm gonna give you the whole guideline from A to Z. So the structure of dropshipping in general and how you should do it is first you find a product, then you create the store and the ads, and then you run Facebook ads. So you basically set up everything and start launching Facebook ads. You have to understand that dropshipping is a numbers game and you have to have the mindset of being open to testing a couple of products until you find a winner. You're not gonna always succeed on the first try. You're gonna have a couple of attempts till you find that winner and obviously it's possible to do it on the first try, but as a beginner it's just less likely, okay? So keep in mind, don't have the expectation to succeed from the very first try, keep going no matter what happens, and that's a really, really strong mindset to have. Because if you fail once, if even twice, or even five products fail, that's not a big deal. For a lot of people, they didn't find a winning product in the first five products as well. And they kept going, and then they found the winner and basically made all the money back, okay? So keep that in mind, it's really important, and a lot of people just give false expectations on that because everybody who tells you they have a 100% success rate in dropshipping, they're just lying. Nobody I know, and I know a lot of people who are doing seven figures and even eight figures, they're not finding winners every single time, okay? Whenever you test products, you're not gonna have success every time. The success rate is gonna be for sure lower than 100% if you test a bunch of products. All right, so let's start with number one, product research. When it comes to dropshipping, by far the most important thing is how to do product research. And everybody talks about how you do it, where you find products, but in the end of the day, it does not matter at all. It doesn't matter where you find a product, you just have to know how to select good products from bad ones. If you see 100 products, no matter where, you have to understand which of these is good, okay? So you have to identify the best ones. So for that, you have to have a couple of criteria in place, which I'm gonna cover here. So the very first thing you have to keep in mind is that the product has to have proven concept. A lot of beginners think, okay, I wanna sell this product. However, a lot of other people are already doing it. I, my competition is too strong. I'm not gonna stand out. It's not gonna work out if I just sell a, a like proven concept product. I'm gonna rather reinvent the wheel, start out with a product which nobody sold yet and crush it over there because I don't have competition. You can do that as an advanced guy for sure. As a beginner, you have no chance. You're not gonna identify a winning product by yourself without proven concept, no matter what you do as a beginner, okay? So, have a product which is having a proven concept but is not saturated yet. What does that mean? The very first thing you have to do is identify your market cap. To understand what is saturated and what is not saturated, you have to understand what the limit is in your niche. For example, if you are in the dog niche, you have to know how big the biggest competitor is you have who is doing dropshipping. For example, if your biggest competitor has 300,000 likes, you know that a product which has only 70,000 likes or 30,000 likes has a lot of room for, for, for improvement. And basically, it can be scaled. So that means that it's probably not saturated yet, okay? It has to have at least five to 10,000 likes to have a proven concept. You, you shouldn't sell a product which has extremely low engagement, okay? So the product should already work for other people. Also, one trick you can do to identify if it's working right now is to buy from your competition two times. So basically how Shopify works is you're gonna get an order number after somebody buys from your store. When you buy from a competitor today and you see the order number you have is 1005, for example, and you buy tomorrow again and then you see the order number is 1500, uh, then you know exactly that that guy had 495 orders in that one day, okay? And that means that it's working for him. That means right now it's a proven concept, it's a winning product right now. I would for sure sell products in the beginning which have a proven concept right now. They're working at this particular time, not one year old, not two years old. So that's criteria number one. 
The second thing is the margin. You have to have really strong margins to be profitable in dropshipping. I would aim for at least 3x. Basically, if you can buy a product for $10, you have to be able to sell it for 30. How do you know that? You basically have to look at your competition and see how much they're selling it for. So first you check on AliExpress, the product costs $10, and then you see on your competition, okay, they sell it for 40. Perfect, 4x margin, more than three, that's great. However, keep in mind that that store, the competition store, has to be not branded. Because branded stores can get away with way higher prices and still make a lot of sales. However, when you start out and don't have a branded store yet, you will not have that advantage, okay? So, look at regular dropshipping stores and if they sell a 3x margin, then go for it. The third criteria I would look out for is either you have a really good concept of how to film the ads, so you have a perfect clear image. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take that product, put it on my dog, for example, and I know exactly how to film it. I have a dog, everything is working great. Or you have to have a lot of clips out there which you could already use for your product. So either you know what clips you're gonna make or you know what clips you already have and that they're good, okay? So the creatives are extremely important and a lot of people don't think about that before starting with a product. If you have a product which has amazing 10 out of 10 creative, it's gonna be so much easier to sell that than if you have to create everything from scratch and don't have any idea how you're gonna film that. It's very simple. Some products just give you the opportunity to make amazing creatives, while some other products just don't have the potential for amazing creatives or you're not creative enough to make them, okay? So, the last criteria I would also focus on is upsell potential. So your product has to be able to be sold two or three times when it makes sense. For example, if you're selling a spoon, it makes a lot of sense to buy two, three, four spoons or a set of spoons. However, if you're selling something which doesn't make sense to buy two or three times, then you're gonna have a hard time having double orders. That's also something a lot of people don't think of before starting out. So to recap, a proven concept, a product which works right now, a product which has good creatives, a product which has upsell potential, and also a product which has a 3x margin. Okay, so those four points are crucial. For me, I'm using a lot more criteria, but for the beginning, that's more than enough. And in general, I would be very, very picky. So every time you see a product, don't just think, okay, I like this product, it's great, let me start with it. That doesn't, it's not gonna work like that. You have to, every single time, go through all of the criteria and think, does it fit this one, does it fit this one, does it fit this one, does it fit this one? Obviously, things like problem solving and wow effect, those things help a lot. However, you're gonna get away with a lot of products which don't have that if you have everything else down, okay? So if a product has a proven concept, has a good margin, is working right now, and you have good creatives and an upsell potential, it's probably gonna work, okay? Obviously, again, we are using way more criteria and that's not everything, but that's more than enough in the beginning to start with. So we have other videos on the channel on specifically how and where to find winning products, but this is just gonna be a rundown on what to look out for, okay? So the next thing you have to have down is the creatives. I'm speaking about this a lot, but the product is by far the most important thing you're gonna have. The second most important is the creative. The video itself is extremely important, okay? Number three priority is the targeting on Facebook, and number four is the store. That's your priority listing. A lot of people just start out with store and make that perfect and don't focus on the rest and think it's gonna work. It's not gonna happen, it doesn't work like that, okay? So let's focus on number two, which is the creatives. The skill of creating very, very strong videos is extremely valuable. I would highly recommend learning that skill. And I'm not talking about like perfect videography, making like epic drone shots or whatever. A simple iPhone video is enough as long as it's done the proper way. A good video has to look native to the feed. It has to look like it belongs into your Instagram or Facebook feed. It doesn't have to look like an ad. It doesn't have to look super salesy has to look like a recommendation, like a person telling you, I love this product, get this, because I love this so much, I would highly recommend you using that as well, okay? So best case, you have influencers or people talking about the product, or if not, you can even do a video by yourself or cut clips together um, from, from the internet. After you select your product, the creatives should be your number one focus. Don't spend too much time in the store, spend the most amount of time on the creatives, the creatives are gonna be the thing which is gonna make your business profitable or not profitable if you already selected a good product. With creatives, you have to keep one thing in mind. The scroll stopper matters the most. 
The scroll stopper is the first couple of seconds of the video, the first three to five seconds, which are gonna explain to the viewer what the product is about or grab the attention of the viewer. These videos were either super attention grabbing or explain the product perfectly, okay? Those two things are extremely important when it comes to scroll stoppers and don't use just like a stock video which everybody would scroll past when they see. Use something which looks native, which looks engaging, which looks fun, or which explains the per product perfectly. To create good ads, you don't need crazy video editing skills. You also don't need super expensive um, programs like Final Cut or whatever. You just need simple apps like InShot, for example. If you have an iPhone, I think for Android it all works as well. But the, word, the app InShot is extremely good um, for video editing and it's super simple to use. You're gonna learn it in a couple of hours and you can make really good content on there or cut clips together and basically put in text. It's gonna be very easy to start out with, okay? Also, understand that your competition is the best teacher you have. If you're selling a product, you have to look out for the competition. You have to look out for what they're doing, how they structure their ads to know what you're gonna do. You have to model everybody else and just have your own unique twist to them to be great at creatives. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Also, one thing you have to remember is always start out with three videos. When you're gonna move over to Facebook ads and actually launch the product, have three videos ready. If you only start out with one video, that's not gonna be good. Because if that one video is not gonna be that great or for some reason it doesn't resonate with the audience, it's not gonna work. So I would always have that diversification of three videos and basically make a couple of different angles, different scroll stoppers to st start out with, okay? So keep that in mind. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the store and then we're gonna get to the Facebook ads. All right, so let's cover the basics for store creation. First of all, let's start with the basics. You don't have to have a crazy advanced store and a theme like the Beautify is gonna be more than enough and you don't have to focus on that too much. Use the Beautify, that's it. It doesn't really matter which theme you use, but that one I've seen works pretty well. So there's a huge debate going on between one product store, niche store, and general store. There's two things I would do. Either if you are not confident in the products you're testing, I would go for a general store. So if you don't know for sure that your, your products are really good, then I would go for a general store just to test really quick. And then when you find a good product, then you move over to a niche or one product store with that best product, okay? However, if you're confident in your product, if you think it's a really good one, then I would start with a niche slash one product store, basically a niche store which is based around one product and just have, has a couple of upsells in the same store. So again, don't waste your time on making that decision. Just pick one and stick to that and that's it. If you're not confident, general store. If you're confident, the niche store. And then move on to the next step. Create everything, set up the product, put everything in. Um, don't forget upsells. Use an app like Bundle Bear, like Honeycomb upsells. Have a bunch of shipping options. I have another video which is talking about that. You can check it out somewhere here. And when it's done, then actually get to the next steps, okay? So only focus on not looking scammy. Focus on having the best possible price. So select a price which is proven from competition. Use a price which anybody else was already using, which is not a brand. And then also number three, don't look scammy. Don't look like you're gonna rip off the people. It just has to have a baseline of okay. Not too many colors. The whole product page should be based around one color and you're gonna be good. Here on the screen somewhere you're gonna see an example of one of the products we tested at some point. And this is a baseline store, it doesn't look crazy. This is exactly how your store should look like in the very beginning. Later on you can focus on the branding and all, on all of that, but you don't need that in the beginning. You're not gonna have the difference of a losing product becoming a winner because of your store, because that's not gonna happen. Your, your losing products are gonna be turned into winners on Facebook, if you have good creatives and if you have a good Facebook ad structure. With a store, it has to be extremely bad for it to be making an impact from a losing to a winning one. If a baseline store goes from a five out of 10 to a eight or nine out of 10, it's not gonna be from a losing to a winning. It's just gonna convert a little bit better and that you need only in the scaling process, okay? So a baseline store is enough. Don't waste your time, focus on the other things. And the last thing I wanna talk about here is the Facebook ad structure, okay? So, number one is don't get emotionally attached to your products. If something doesn't work, kill it. Don't think about it too much. Don't think I've invested so much time and effort into this, I need to keep it running. 
just kill the product. Number two is if you see that something is not working, you're not, your, your ads are not converting, then only split test one thing at a time. Don't split test five things. For example, don't test new creatives, a new product page, a new price at the same time. You're not gonna know which one out of these split tests made the impact, okay? So only test one thing at a time, don't mix anything together. Also, the priority split test has to be scroll stoppers, new creatives, a new price, and new audiences. That's the things you have to split test, and that's it. Don't test a bunch of new product pages, new copies, new thumbnails. Don't focus on that. It's also not gonna turn a losing product into a winning one. Just scroll stoppers, creatives, price, and audience as well, okay? So if you see that all of your ad sets don't work, just kill the product. It doesn't make sense to keep going. Actually, I have a video about this. I have a video about all the scenarios which could happen if you have a losing product, if you have a break-even product, or if you have a winning product. I'm also gonna link it somewhere here. I would highly recommend checking that out as well. It's really, really important. And yeah, the structure of, the structure of Facebook ads should be five ad sets and three creatives inside of each ad set. It's really important to start with one, uh, with, it's really important to start with a couple of ad sets just to have different audiences. Don't start with five ad sets with the same interest, basically have five different interests. Depending on your budget, I would go for 10, 20 or $50 bu uh, budgets per ad set. If you're a beginner, just start out with $10 and see how it's gonna go. Keep in mind that your pixel has to be warmed up and the first couple of hundred dollars you spend, you cannot expect the results you're gonna see later on. So in the beginning, just leave the things running which make sales. However, still kill everything very quick. If you see you spent $20 and it didn't make a sale, just kill the product, uh, kill, the, kill the ad set. If you have a higher ticket product or in general, if something is not working, I would also look at CPM, CTR, CPC. So for that, I would give baseline KPIs, for example, for CTR unique. If you have below 2% CTR unique, I would kill those ad sets. They're probably not gonna work as long as they did make sales. Obviously, if they made a bunch of sales, don't kill them. If you're selling to the US and your CPM is above 20, $25, also not the best sign, but 20, 22 is semi okay. Above that, I would also look out for that and probably you have to change up the creatives. However, keep in mind that you only have to look at the most important things, which is ROAS and CPP. Okay, those two metrics are by far the most important. Next thing is don't split test thumbnails. Just have one thumbnail for all the creatives you have and also have only one copy for all the creatives you have. That's important to split test only one thing. It's gonna be the creative which you're gonna split test, have the same thumbnail, same copy, okay? Copywriting is important, but it's sometimes a little bit overrated. The video is more important than the copywriting. Copywriting, um, is important as well. So if you want some kind of template for that, just write the word copy in the comments and I'm gonna send uh, that your way. The next thing is don't be shy of scaling what works. If you have ad sets which work well, then increase budgets on them, create new ad sets which um, are gonna be the same targeting, same creative, and just basically have more ad spent on them. Have a specific scaling structure and how you do that. Also keep in mind that you should never change a running system, okay? So if something is working, don't touch it. If you're best perform, if you only have one good ad set, don't touch it, don't change anything on there, just leave it, leave it running. And if you wanna scale it, instead of increasing the budget, create a new one, which is gonna be having the same exact budget, and then basically you double the budget without touching that ad set. So that's really important, not changing anything, don't change the creatives in there, don't, don't, don't do anything, okay? Also, the last two things I wanna mention is number one, don't waste your time on break-even products. Break-even products eat up most of your time. If you have a break-even product and it's like one day it's profitable, one day it's losing money and it's constantly like that, you test a bunch of things and it still keeps doing like that, focus on the next one and run that in the background because that can go on for like a month or so if you don't have the craziest budget. So you have to keep running the next products and test the next thing instead of wasting your time on only one product when it's breaking even. Just treat it as a thing which is in the background. If it's not gonna work fine, you almost forget about it, but you split test, split test things on there to, to keep it alive. So do that when you have a break-even product. Original content in general is gonna be huge for you. If you use influencers or user-generated content, it's gonna help you out dramatically. Videos are gonna be looking so much better, the performance is gonna be so much better as well, and everything will be better if you have your own creative. 
Model them after your competition, structure it almost the same way if you see competitors are doing well with that, but create your own things. Facebook is gonna love you for that as well. And the algorithm will also give you a boost if you use your own specific creatives. If you got some value out of this video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you are interested in having a coaching with me personally, which is gonna be one-on-one, -on -one, we're doing one-on-one -on -one free consultation sessions right now. So in that consultation session, I can answer all of your questions, tell you exactly what you need to, to do to actually get your business started and scale it to five or six figures per month. Basically, I'm gonna hold your hand from A to Z. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you have to do from the beginning till the end and help you out in every single step, okay? So if you're interested in that, click the link below, sign up for a free consultation session where we're gonna find out if you're a good fit. And if yes, we're gonna actually get started with it.